Our first ever DPS sustained hybrid enters Panicony, heralding a new era of sustain featuring damage output on top of the ability to keep your team alive. Hey guys, Mr. Pokey here, back with another video and for the second half of version 2.1, Aventurine is now on the banner as a 5-star preservation that has the ability to both comfortably sustain your entire team with its extremely powerful shields on top of dealing respectable damage over time with its high frequency of follow-up attacks as well as ultimate damage. As usual, for a more basic outline of Aventurine, feel free to check out my previous video of CN's first impression and for this video, we're going to really dive deep into his kit and without further ado, Let's get into today's content. So just very briefly going over his abilities, uh, his basic attack is just a very normal basic attack that scales with his defense instead of attack. And for Aventurine's rotations, it will always be scale, basic, basic, and we will aim to achieve a three turn ultimate. So leveling this basic attack does offer some additional damage considering that Aventurine's kit itself is focused on damage output, right? So it will not be as useless compared to the other sustained basic attack, which pretty much will deal no damage whatsoever. For his skill, Cornerstone Deluxe players just need to know that at 4,000 defense, this is basically equivalent to 1,280 shield or 2,560 and at full 200% efficiency. Uh, this is with no four piece knight or any external buffs for his shield amount. Just for a little bit of comparison, majority of our current DPS and supports hovers around 3,500 HP, so this shield basically doubles our effective health pool for most, if not all, of our DPS and sustains. And as long as the enemies cannot penetrate this shield at 4000 defense or even higher, uh, Ventrin will pretty much have no issues sustaining your entire team since this shield does apply to the entire team. And for his ultimate, randomly gains 1 to 7 points of blind bat and then inflicts unnerved on a single target, which is increasing the crit damage dealt from your ally whenever they hit an unnerved target. Right. So this ultimate itself, it does do quite a considerable amount of damage since it does go with 270% of Aventurine's defense and the RNG factor of 1 to 7 of Blind Bat pretty much one additional follow-up attack from his talent. The Unnerved itself is a debuff that increases our incoming crit damage assuming that we actually land a crit. So this is basically a 15% crit damage buff additive to whatever your unit have similar to your Banditry 4-piece or your Silver Wolf's Incessant Rain. It also counts the debuff, keep that in mind. So for units like Doctor Ratio, and Akron or any future units that want some sort of debuff, then note that this unnerved debuff will help in achieving these criteria. And for his talent, which is pretty much one of the most important parts of Venturing's kit, first part is the increases effect rest for everyone with fortified wager which is his shield. So basically your entire team will have an additional 50% effect rest. And now 50% effect rest, it is not very impactful if a unit has like close to zero effect rest. So from zero to 50, they're probably still gonna get crowd control. But for units who already are stacking on effect rest, especially your previous supports, they are running broken queue. So maybe you have like 10, 20, or even 30% effect rest. Then this jump from 30% to 80% effect rest will bring about a very noticeable difference. And you'll find that your units will resist a lot, a lot of debuffs because of this additional 50% effect rest. Uh, not to mention, this also helps players to trigger the broken kills condition, which will only grant a crit damage when you're at least 30% effect rest, right? So uh, just a very, very comfortable thing for you to provide to your entire supports. Blind bat stacks are also gained from getting hit so this is inclusive of the entire team and Aventurine himself, but for Aventurine himself, he's going to get two stacks, while the rest of the team is going to get one stack. So for example, if a AOE attack were to hit your entire team, such as Kokolia's ultimate or True Storm's ultimate or Yan Qing's ultimate, he will gain five stacks of blind bet, since it is three stacks from your three different allies and two stacks from him getting hit himself, which will greatly improve his follow-up frequency and 25% of the defense multiplier per hit, it is going to be multiplied by seven, which is 175% for every single follow-up attack. And in practice, this damage ramps up very, very considerably over time because his frequency of the follow-up attacks can be very, very high itself. And lastly, for Aventurine's technique, is pretty much whether you gain a 24% or a 60% defense buff. Uh, whether do you gain this buff at the highest value or the lower value, Aventurine can still very comfortably sustain your entire team, although the defense percentage does drastically reduce incoming damage for the first three turns 
defense. So especially for squisher teammates like your team wing, your Pella, then this 60% defense can be quite considerable. Then moving on to his tracers, he has 35% defense, 14.4% imaginary damage boost, and 10% effect rest. All of these are excellent, excellent tracers. And even the imaginary damage boost is going to be beneficial for adventuring because he does not have any access to damage percentage buffs. And as a damage dealer, like I mentioned in my previous video as well, adventuring's best build should be built as a sub DPS. Imaginary damage boost is definitely going to be quite beneficial to its overall kit. And the first major trace, Bingo. This is extremely, extremely good for his overall sustain and the frequency of the flop attacks because now whenever any ally with the shield launches a flop attack, you can gain one additional blind bet up to three times and then you have to refresh on Adventuring's turn similar to how March 7's counter works, right? So this will allow for a much higher uptime of Adventuring's own flop attacks with teammates like Dr. Ratio, Topaz and Clara. And like I've seen from the previous video, usually if your Adventuring goes uh, at a normal three turns, you you probably will get 4.5 follow up attacks across this three turns. But now, with a teammate like Dr. Ratio and Topaz, this frequency can go up from 4.5 to 6 times. But again, this is just in a theoretical assumption. A TLDR bottom line follow up frequency goes up, right? But on top of this increased follow up attack frequency, the, there's also a small amount of shield generated upon each follow up attack. Now, at a glance, this is very, very small, which is only 7% of his defense plus 96. But this is stackable. So whenever your teammates are facing issues where shield is dangerously low, it can further stack on to whatever shield that Aventurine have on top of that. And it adds up to 200% of his skill value. But keep in mind, it will not exceed over 200%. So if you really have a, a maximum shield at 200% efficiency, then this will not add on, right? Another trace, Hot Hand, all ally gains a fortified shield at the start of the turn, which is 100% to the skill, which is basically exactly the same as Run May but you don't have to cast a technique point, right? You instantly start off the battle with the shield equivalent to the shield given from your skill. So this can greatly improve the overall comfort at the start of battle, especially against high pressure end game content. Also, this allows Adventuring's first skill cast to instantly hit the 200% cap of the shield, right? That was a full shield amount. And for the final trace, which is arguably one of, if not the most important trace, which makes Adventuring an excellent sub DPS, is leverage. For every 100 defense that exceeds 1,600, increase crit rate by up to 48%. Now, this is basically why. DPS adventure is such an excellent, excellent build, right? 48% crit rate or 96% crit value is granted upon reaching 4,000 defense. 4,000 defense is going to be the cap. Any additional defense, you can still make him deal more damage. You can still make his shield stack on even more, but it will not give you additional crit rate. Uh, this means that adventure can maintain his sustained capabilities since you are going to try to hit 4,000 defense, which means his shield is not going to be anywhere low, right? On top of that, it allows him to deal additional damage from his follow up attacks, from his basic attacks, from his ultimate. So this makes it the perfect synergy for our first ever hybrid sub DPS sustain that is adventuring. And you can see his effects when you try him in battle in Memory of Chaos when you get him, right? So moving on to his Eidolons. For his Eidolon 1, increase crit damage for all allies with the shield, which is basically like full shields E1, give a 30% crit damage buff, but for adventuring, it's always gonna be 20%. Slightly better benefit is that after you use your ultimate, it also gains the exact same shield that you would have cast up from your skill, right? So this is a very well-rounded Eidolon, which improves both adventuring's sustain and damage capabilities through the crit damage buff and the increased shield stacking after casting ultimate. Now moving on to adventuring's Eidolon, to, that is gonna be his first game changing item, right? When using basic attack, reduce all type rest by 12% for three turns. Now, not only is this rest down an excellent, excellent damage increase because it is a separate multiplier, it also counts the debuff by himself, which means DPS units such as Dr. Ratio or even Akron, they can benefit from the fact that this will count as a debuff. So when it comes to team building, when it comes to flexibility, when it comes to the utility, adventuring is gonna provide to all these teammates. So this means that it will greatly benefit DPS like Dr. Ratio, which increases the chance of him casting his follow-up attack, or Akron, which greatly improves his ultimate uptime since you now gain an additional stack of Slash Dream, right? So that is going to be that really, really good. Then moving on to Adventuring's Eidolon 4. Now, this is very similar to Eidolon 1's application, which is basically a mix of both overall sustain and damage capabilities, uh, this time with a 40% defense buff uh, and increasing the follow-up hit from 7 to 10, which is effectively a 75% increase in damage damage multiplier since you have three additional hits of 25%. And as we know, multiplier increase, they are 
excellent, excellent sources of damage increase. And with Adventuring's E4, his damage output can see an up to 45% final damage increase because his flow of attack, not only does he gain an additional 75% increase in multiplier, but the additional 40% defense will also help him scale with all of his damage. His flow of attack, his basic attack, his ultimate, since they all scale defense. And this is going to be a very, very good item if players really, really want to increase his damage output. And speaking of the absolute highest increase in damage output, then you're going to jump into his item. 6, which is pretty much an up to 150% damage buff uh, worth for every ally of a shield, right? A 150% damage buff for Ventrine is extremely beneficial since, like I mentioned earlier on, he personally lacks damage percentage unless he's paired with supports like Run Mei. So without Run Mei, this is going to be a roughly 100% final damage increase. And if you're going to be using him with Run Mei or any form of supports that buffs his damage percentage, it is going to be still a roughly 60% final damage increase. Very, very high value here. So in summary, Aventurine's kit is pretty much complete at E0 and the further items improve his overall comfort for players requiring more shields and more damage. Uh, E2, it opens up more rotations for specific team comps such as Doctor Ratio and Akron. Right, but one important thing to note when you're considering to pull for Adventuring's Idolance with the objective of increasing damage. So if you're pulling for his Idolance not to increase his overall sustain but just to increase damage, then consider that all these Adventuring Idolance they can also be allocated to your main DPS or support Idolance. For example, your Akron, your Doctor Ratio, or your Run Maze Idolance, right? So they tend to perform much better when it comes to increasing your overall damage output as compared to a sustained Idolance such as Adventuring for damage purposes. And once again, refer to my previous video for whether should you pull for Adventuring, especially for its idols, right? So that's something to consider. And that's gonna be pretty much it for his overall idols and jumping straight into his relics. Uh, first portion, Energy Threshold. Very, very straightforward rotation. Adventuring will focus on a 3 turn ultimate in order to maintain a 100% uptime for his ultimate unnerved debuff, right? Uh, note that for each follow-up attack, Adventuring will gain 7 energy. So this is gonna be quite quite crucial for his rotations. And as you can see over here, our first rotation is gonna be our skill basic basic with three follow-up attacks, right? No ER rope, two piece with kill or Sausoto for 0% ER. You can see that he gains 96 energy. So as long as you get hit twice across three turns, Adventuring can complete a three turn ultimate. Now CN, they heavily prefer this setup because it opens up other main stats for more offensive options, namely crit damage chest and imaginary damage sphere while still maintaining a 3 turn ultimate by getting hit. So since Adventuring himself is a preservation unit with a higher ton value than the rest of the team, Adventuring will have pretty much no issues maintaining this 3 turn ultimate even without energy generation rope. But that being said, if players really want to get 100%, no worry in your mind, even if he doesn't get hit, you just want to continuously cast a 3 turn ultimate, then you can give him an ER rope, giving him 114.624 energy, guarantee a 3 turn ultimate every single turn, right? You don't want to leave things up to chance every single time, even if he doesn't get hit, 3 turn ultimate, then that's going to be dead. But keep in mind, this will negatively affect Adventuring's shield and damage since you are trading away 43% defense for ER rope. So either you compensate this by giving more defense on your damage sphere or more defense on your chest. But if you were to do that, then you will lower his overall damage output because uh, damage percentage and crit ratio is going to be excellent, excellent multipliers more than defense percentage himself. So in summary, for pretty much almost every single situation, defense rope is preferred unless players absolutely need the 100% three turn ultimate every single battle without resetting. Then if that's the case, then feel free to go ahead and get your ER rope, right? Then for Aventurine's Relic set, now note that for all units, not just Aventurine, Rainbow or two-piece plus Rainbow is far better than a forced two-piece with terrible subsets, right? Adjust this based on your inventory. But assuming that you have similar subsets for all of your relic sets, then the best in slot for DPS Aventurine, which is also the best in slot built for Aventurine, is going to be the four-piece Diver, right? Uh, Aventurine's main selling point is that his sustain 
deals additional damage output far greater than any of our other sustains. So similar to how Huo Huo has such a great sustain value from the 40% attack buff as well as the team-wide energy regeneration, Adventuring, he also increased your team-wide damage output with his personal follow-up attack damage, ultimate damage, as well as the unnerved debuff, right? So Diver 4-piece will ensure the highest damage increase, especially for Adventuring, since he himself can apply debuffs every single time you would use his ultimate. But for players that don't really care about damage that much, then an excellent alternative would be the 4-piece Night Set, which will give you a much bigger shield, even if you don't have enough defense percentage, right? For CN players, they found that for all current endgame content, Adventuring with 4,000 defense can easily sustain his entire team even without Knight's 4-piece effect and defense bonus and hence, they tend to prefer for more damage with the 4-piece Diver. Now, if players, they really desperately need the additional shield, especially if you're an early game player that just started out playing Honkai Stario, pulling for Adventuring, then 4-piece Knight set will probably benefit you more since surviving is the name of the game for all early game players, right? Then moving on to his planetary set, Q would be an ideal choice as a sustain to offer additional offensive utility for your entire team. Note that this crit damage buff, it is applied to all units as well as being stackable with your other supports. So teams like Doctor Ratio, Topaz, they will greatly benefit from the crit damage buff because both Doctor Ratio, Topaz, even Adventuring himself will gain the 10% crit damage. Uh, with the 50% effect rest, this also guarantees the trigger condition not only for Adventuring but for all other supports in your team. Uh, Panacony can also be considered for an imaginary DPS team such as Doctor Ratio, while the 5% additional energy regeneration, it will allow Adventuring to achieve 110 energy from only getting hit once every 3 turns instead of getting hit twice every 3 turns, right? Because with this additional 5% energy, you are now at 100.8 energy after your skill basic basic and you will get 110. Now if you do not want these like supportive options, then Salsoto 2-piece is also going to be an excellent choice to improve Adventuring's personal damage even further with the additional crit rate, ultimate damage, and flop damage. Although it will lead to increased Adventuring's personal damage, it will lead to a damage loss on your other carries and Adventuring himself, he cannot be a main DPS since his follow-up attack frequency, it is unable to increase if you were to funnel him with like your hyper carry supports, right? Like your Ramay, Sparkle, Ting Yun. He's just fixed to this amount of follow-up attacks, whether you're running him as a main DPS or a sub DPS. So for that, uh, most of the time, Kill and Panacony does offer a little bit more value when you play Adventuring as a sub DPS. Finally, moving on to his main and sub stats, uh, with two defense percentage main stats, Adventuring can achieve 4,000 defense even without his signature light cone after getting some defense percentage sub stats, right? Now, when discussing a optimal Adventuring build, uh, crit damage body, Defense percentage boots and rope and imaginary damage sphere will bring out the highest damage increase for Adventuring, fully making use of his kit as a sub DPS slash sustain hybrid. But for players who are looking for even more comfort with a bigger shield, then you can opt for more defense percentage main stats on your body and sphere while you use an ER rope and speed boots to ensure timely ultimates and skill point generation. So there are two schools of thoughts. If you want more comfort, go for the a more defensive option. If you just want to do more damage, then go for the more offensive option. Uh, now jumping into his light cone section. Now this is one of the pretty much the best part about Adventuring, and I would say for almost every single sustain, is that they are fundamentally not tied to any of the Synergy Light Cones, unlike like your DPS Synergy Light Cones, which does provide a substantial damage increase. So for Adventuring, his S1 is definitely going to be the best in slot, right? It has the highest base defense in the game, which will greatly improve Adventuring's final defense value from all of the defense percentage buffs he gets from his relics, right? Uh, the main benefit of this Light Cone, on top of the extremely high defense value, it is not just for the sustain, but also more from the damage increment from the crit damage buff and the vulnerability debuff. Now note that this debuff, it also helps with Aircron's stacking. So if players, if you only care about his damage output, then S1 Adventuring will give the highest damage output. But if you only care about Adventuring's value as a sustain when it comes to keeping your team alive, then there are a lot, a lot of different options as I'll be mentioning right here. And first of all, being the Japart Light Cone moment of victory, right? 48% defense, especially after you get hit, is going to be very respectable despite it having a lower base defense. The increased taunt chance can also be very handy to draw in more aggression towards Adventuring and prevent damage being dealt to your other squisher teammates. Uh, furthermore, Adventuring, we remember and earlier at the start, he does generate two stacks of blind bets when he 
himself gets hit, which can potentially increase his floor attack frequency. Uh, if you do not have Japar's Light Cone, then there's two roads to go for in the four star alternatives, right? Uh, for a more defense oriented substitute, you can go for a day one of my life, texture of memories, or Landau's choice. They are focusing more on adventuring and his team's sustained capabilities and forsaking adventuring's damage output. Now, this is recommended for players who are new to the game and facing difficulties in the early stages of account creation. But for players who want a slightly more offense oriented substitute, then you can look into the, the Destiny Threads 4 woven as well as Trend of Universal Market, right? They can increase his personal damage or it can inflict even more debuffs for Archon teams. Now, this is only recommended if players do have no issues when it comes to sustaining and you just want to see a higher damage output from Aventuring to clear a stage faster. Uh, in summary, Aventuring's S1, it is only recommended if players are looking to improve Aventuring's damage output. If you're looking to improve his sustain output, then the preservation path, there's plenty of other alternatives easily accessible for all players. Uh, but with that in mind, Aventuring's signature light cone should only be considered if players already have signature light cone for their main DPS and support. Because for main DPS and support, their signature light cone tends to offer a much bigger increment when it comes to damage output than a sustained signature light cone. So for example, if you are using adventure with a team like Archron and Ramay, you definitely want to get Archron's signature light cone first and Ramay's signature light cone first before considering for adventuring's signature light cone, right? So at the end of the day, it is always about opportunity cost. Now jumping into our final section, which is adventuring's team composition, he himself, he can sustain pretty much any of our current team comps, ranging from all hyper carries, dual DPS, or even DOT team comps, although they will not benefit from the crit damage buff, right? Uh, for more in-depth explanation, check out my previous video. Uh, this is possible because Aventurine, he has excellent sustained capabilities with an almost 100% uptime on shields, as well as excellent damage capabilities, which can stack up over time and potentially save a big damage from being wasted on a mob with like 10 or 20 HP, right? You could potentially waste the ultimate such as Archon's ultimate or even Jing Yuan's Lion Lord, right? So that is Aventurine's chip damage true value. But that being said, the two most synergistic team cons so far would be for Doctor Ratio and Topaz, as well as the Akron team comp, right? So for the first team comp, Ratio Topaz run main with Aventurine, do you can say that this team is now fully complete as all members of this team will benefit from every single other member. So looking at Topaz, Topaz debuffs, she can help Ratio and Aventurine's damage output. Then for Ratio, he can benefit from Topaz and Aventurine's debuff to increase his damage and the follow up attack proc chance since we do have additional debuffs. Right? Then Ramay, she has team-wide rest penetration, weakness break efficiency, uh, and the damage percentage which can benefit all three damaging units because Aventurine himself, he does deal quite a lot of damage. And finally, Aventurine, he can also gain increased blind bets from both Ratio and Topaz while dealing more damage with Topaz slash Ramay. So this setup, it will allow for the absolute highest adventuring personal damage dealing 236,000 per 100 action value inclusive of his basic full up attack and ultimate. So this is going to be an excellent, excellent team for players who have these units. But another team comp that you can consider is going to be the Akron team comp running Silver Wolf and Pella. Now this is also extremely synergistic since Aventurine's debuff from his ultimate, it can help Akron stack on Slash Dreams and getting his signature light cone or his Island 2 further takes this to the next level, greatly improving Aircron's ultimate rotation uptime. Uh, Pella and Sir Wolf, their debuffs, they also benefit Aventurine's personal damage, which scales much better compared to another sustain, such as Fushion or Japart, because they themselves, they don't deal much damage. But if you were to pair a damage dealer plus sustain like Aventurine with debuffs, then you can see the damage increment is going to be much more obvious, right? Now, his personal damage will not be as high as compared to Topaz Ratio Rame at only 156. 6,000 per 100 action value, but due to Akron's incredible, incredible damage on her own, as well as the increased ultimate uptime with Aventurine's debuff, this team will also tend to perform very well, if not even better than Topaz and Ratio, depending on the environment, right? And just one final note before we wrap up this video, is that if you are considering pulling for E2 as on Aventurine for an Akron team comp, it is highly recommended to first obtain an E2 as on Akron instead, as it will be a much, much bigger 
dagger damage increase as well as improving her overall team flexibility. And with that, we've come to the end of today's content. Let me know in the comments below what you like about adventuring and you are going to be pulling for him. If you want to engage in any further discussions, head on over to my Discord at discord.gg for says Pokies Village. We're very active for me to talk about Hongai story on a daily basis. If you want to check out my stream, that's twitch.tv for says Mr. Pokey. It's on youtube.com for says Mr. Pokey. I'll be streaming every single day. Share it with the update on Discord, right? So that's all I have for today. All the best for adventuring pools and I'll see you guys next time. Take care.